everybody, it's Crystal. How are you doing? I hope wherever you are on the planet today that you're having a beautiful experience and it's totally in the light. Now, I get a lot of uh, questions from people. They email me at crystal at crystallancompton.com. I love hearing from people. It takes me quite some time to respond these days, but I go through them, y'all, one by one. I try to, and I, and I respond to a lot of them. I can't to everyone, but I do try. But I also reserve questions that I think that a lot of us should probably be talking about because I think the answer will benefit more than just the person asking. And so this is one of those questions. This comes in from somebody named Kelly. Kelly actually is a student of mine. Um, and she asks, when it comes to family, in particular parents, when is it okay to just say no? I feel pressured on many occasions to do what my mother thinks I should do. And if I don't, she somehow makes me feel guilty. In the spiritual realm, is honoring our mother and father something we have to do? <laughs> no. No. That's a biblical. That's a biblical rule to honor your mother and your father and also to honor your elders. Now, I do think that we should be deferential to our parents to an extent. But at some point, we have to realize, especially when we're adults, and Kelly, I think you're in your 30s, probably when we're adults we're established you have a family you have your own gig you have your own vision for your life you get to own that your parents don't own your vision for your life your parents didn't sign your soul contract which is that contract that you the blueprint really that you drew up with your with your advisors or your counsel if you will or with your higher self in order to come into this life and have specific experiences many times the most important lesson is learning how to say no. Learning how to go against that which we've been taught and conditioned into and strike out on our own and do what we feel is correct for us. This can be a scary thing for people, especially for people who are in relationships with other people who dominate them. And these people dominate them not because they're bad people. Kelly, your mom's probably not a bad person, but she is used to this pattern of behavior. She is used to this level of control because the truth is you've abdicated your sovereignty. You've given up and laid at somebody else's feet the path and the momentum and the direction and the progression of your life or at least a part of your life and so she's used to this of course she's used to having told you how to do it for so long 20 30 years now she's used to having told you how to raise your own kids how to be in a marriage to somebody she's used to telling you about how to handle your money or so on and so forth because you've allowed this that's okay that's been part of your karmic lesson is to allow this and then to come to that place that moment when the student must surpass the teacher, or when the child must surpass the parent. There is this weird thing that happens, right, at a certain age, that where the child has to start counseling the parent, taking care of the parent, bringing the parent into alignment with what the child needs or with what the parent should be doing. There's, a, there's kind of an awkward shifting of authority that happens and the reality is that many of those parents, those elders, don't want to give up that control because they're used to it. This is why we see people who are 90 years old and who should not be driving hanging on with all their might to their driver's license because that is a representation of their sovereignty. This is who I am. I get to drive. And if they don't get to, they feel like they are diminished. And so it's hard for the older person, for the parent, for the teacher to relinquish control. However, relinquishing control is a sign of enlightenment and advancement. And sometimes we have to help people to advance. Sometimes we have to help people to enlighten and to progress on their own path by being very clear with them and by creating and erecting and then enforcing boundaries with those people. And it's hard. It's hard. And it also can be very scary. I remember when I had to start enforcing boundaries with my father, who was that free radical of a man all coked up and drunk, <laughs> living in a forest in Hawaii, abusing my mom, no electricity, lucky if we had running water. I lived in a hell, really, 
with this dad who was totally checked out and I was afraid of him. I was so afraid of him because I saw what he could do. Come on, you'd be afraid of him too. Anybody wouldn't and everybody was. But there came a point when I was about 23, 24 and I'd been under the thumb of my dad because it, I was conditioned accordingly. I had been married since 19, which was a reaction to that life, my childhood, and, and I needed to get out of the house and into another one. But lo and behold, my father continued energetically to put his thumb on me and to control me and I allowed it. And my husband then allowed it. But there came a moment when I had to push back. I had to push back against that fear. And I remember going to him and I was gonna confront him over something and I was gonna finally say, this will not stand, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is not cool. You can't say the N-word to my friends, you old coot. Nor can you throw my, my sister-in-law out of my house in her underwear, which he did. Like, he was crazy. <laughs> I had to go to his apartment, and I had to stand in front of him, and I shook. I shook to my core, and my, my voice trembled and was weak, and I stuttered which sometimes if you see me on camera talking about my childhood, you'll hear me stutter. And that's a direct result of the abuse that I endured. And it's a physical cellular response to some bullshit that I had to go to through as a child. And I quaked. My dad was drunk when I approached him at two in the afternoon. I remember it so clearly. He was sitting in his, his recliner and he knew what he had done. <laughs> he, he, he knew, well, if she's got any balls, she's probably going to come up here, which I did. Stood before him. And there was this shaft of life, light coming through the window, kind of hitting him in this certain way. So he was lit up from the back, but it kind of had weird shadows on his face. And I often thought my dad was possessed, um, but he was just a drunk. And um, I did what I had to do. I won't tell you what happened. I won't tell you the words that I said, but I did what I had to do. And although this is not a, as stark a moment for you, I hope, or as painful a moment for you, and maybe you have the blessing of some padding here. In other words, you've got some time to just bring her along a little bit and introduce her to the concept that she can't tell you what to do. But if you don't do it, Kelly, you abdicate the sovereignty of your life and your children see you do this. Your husband sees you do this. Other people see you do this. People energetically feel this about you. Oh, it's, that's what she does? Let me take advantage of her because it's an energetic pattern that you emit. It's a signal like anything else. So become serious about what you want to do with your life. Become serious about the voice you would like to have in your own life. And become very intentional, Kelly. I talk about this in all of my classes, don't I? Become very intentional about how you design and populate that life. Because let me tell you what, the less people, usually the better. Okay, and I know with family that's tough because we're related to them. There's Thanksgiving and they come over and they pop in. The, but you have to be intentional about who you allow into your space, especially if you're a sensitive, which you are, especially if you're a spiritual person, especially if your goal or your focus is to fill with light and to ascend in some way. You have got to get to the space and to the place where you can put up that boundary and let them know I'm patrolling this border. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm enforcing this boundary and you can't step past it. The first and she's going to try. Your mom's going to try to step past it. She's used to it. You haven't taught her proper, have you? Mm -mm. She's going to try to cross that line. And the moment she does is probably the most important moment for you. Enforce that boundary and say, no, uh, -uh mom, you can't do that. I told you. I told you that. You have to enforce it because if you don't enforce it the first time, you're not going to enforce it the second time. If you don't enforce it, while you occupy that sovereignty, do you know what I mean? While you stand in the power of who it is that you are and what you want with your life. If you're not standing in that energy when you say, mama, uh-uh, then she's just gonna step past it anyway. I think it comes down, Kelly, to you just getting right with the fact that there's only you. We do have soul groups, you know, 
and we, we come into this incarnation with various people and, and we have things in common and we agree to play roles for one another and that's awesome and your mom is absolutely in your soul group and she's here to play play a role for you and she's here to make you do this that's what she signed up for are you gonna let her down I don't think you should are you gonna let yourself down I don't think you should and if you don't there will be a loosening and I speak it on you right now there will be a loosening in the life things begin to flow when we take the power when we stand in the flow and we occupy it that's when things start to move and to shift and things line up in our life and this will help your mother as well in various aspects of her life if she's you know kind of within the structure of dogma and systems and group think like let's help her out a little bit by pushing back against that help her to be a better person to you that's what i have to say about that there is no metaphysical creed that would demand that you put up with your mom's bullshit which is what it is it's not about honoring your mom it's about your mom perpetrating some bullshit there's no biblical scripture says you got to do that. And if you do do that, you do injury to yourself and those around you and your mama. Don't do that. I know your heart. You ain't going to do that.